Hi guys, today I'm going to explain you how to initialize clock signals in Verilog code for a sequential circuit. Let's take a small simple circuit like the D flip flop, a data flip flop. Let's create a new source of Verilog code. Let's name it as DFF2. Next, let's take the inputs as clock reset. We use a reset which is an active low input, and we use D as the in data input, and Q as the output, and Q bar output. So we have it. <coughs> we know that the truth table of the deep flip flop is as such that when the clock is high, the data that is given at the input is received at the output. So always at positive edge of the clock or negative edge of the clock the output changes so we initialize it as always at positive edge next <laughs> begin if reset is equal to zero output is equal to zero why we use reset is equal to zero because it is an active low input and q bar is the negation of the q in output that is equal to one and else else begin output is equal to data input d q bar is equal to negation of the data input d and and So I think it's done. So next, let's generate the. Oh, sorry. We need to initialize the outputs to be as registers in order to store the output in the in the registers. So next, save it. Now next, let's. Create a test bench. New source GFF two underscore TV. There's the test bench. Now let's initialize the input and the outputs. We assume. Always begin. We initialize the clock. Clock is equal to one for about ten nanoseconds. Next, clock is equal to zero for about. Ten nanoseconds, <coughs> and next let's initialize the reset input, which is an active low input. Reset 
is equal to 1 for about 20 sorry let's initialize it to be 0 in first for about 20 nanoseconds next reset is equal to 1 for the next 20 nanoseconds so and next initialize the data input d D is equal to 0 for about 20 nanoseconds let's give different combinations Next, let's run the okay. We got the output similar from the simulator. Let's check the output. See when the clock is high. And when reset is equal to 0, the output is 0. Next, when the clock is high, reset is equal to high, and the input is high, we get the output to be high. That's nothing but the data is followed. Next, when the clock is low, the output will be the previous output. It will follow the previous output. It is 0, hence it follows the previous output. And next, let's check for another section. When the clock is high, when reset is high, the D input is 1, hence the output is 1. See, you can see that for every positive edge and the negative edge, the output is changing. Falling as well as rising edge, the output changes. Hence, this is how you initialize clock signals in sequential circuits. Hope you understood everything. Thank you.